Hello, welcome. I've done all the other plane types. I've done fighters, I've done cast and tactical bombers, I've done strategic bombers. So let's finally get to naval bombers. And I've got three separate tests that I'm going to do, and I might as well just show you the save files. We've got an agility test, a targeting test, and an AA test. Why the agility test? I've seen some people suggest that you get a bonus from agility on bombers. And I think it's a misapplication of the stats multiplier. Difference in speed divided by 800, difference in agility divided by 100 if you have have more agility, you do more damage. But this is for air combat, only air combat. It has no impact on naval strike because that's not air combat. But I've got a decent little test just to prove my point. We're using this single naval bomber, has lots of agility, 13, na 13 naval attack, 6 naval targeting. I'm intentionally not using dive breaks so that we have the same naval targeting. And then I've got this improved heavy fighter. You can't make a medium airframe that is a naval bomber. You have to make it either a tactical bomber or a heavy fighter. I'm choosing to make it a heavy fighter because it's cheaper and you could make a tactical bomber that does sort of all three as a jack of all trades but i'm specifically looking at a medium airframe for naval bombing in which case i'm just putting the cheapest gun on it two light machine guns and this gives us 25 naval attack six naval targeting so about double naval attack same naval targeting but half the agility so what i've done is on the english side i've taken their starting battleships and battle cruisers and i've just sat them right here in this tile and all i did was i just let them sort and attack them and then just come and look at the damage so we're doing 4.2 pretty normal and then you got to wait for the next one to happen it takes forever and i'll tell you how to make this take less time so we got a double strike here so basically this time both air wings flew because if i have both air wings flying i have about the same naval attack for both of them this happens rarely i actually find that most of the time only one air wing is flying out of the two but i just kept doing this looking at the results we're going to end up seeing that these guys are going to do about five percent damage per naval strike when you average it all out and then i'd go and i'd come back here, load up the agility test, and I'd redo it, but this time with the medium airframe. And I did this three or so times, and it gives you this result at the top. I also tried a maritime bomber, but in three months it only launched one attack, and then I just gave up, because I'm not going to sit here for six years of game time for the maritime bomber to do something. Don't worry, I'll tell you how to avoid that. So the one tactical bomber is definitely doing more damage, and I'm finding it's because even though I'm using two air wings, only one is flying. And outside of the handful of times that two attacks actually occur, we're basically doing half damage. Why? We have half the naval attack per air wing. Agility is doing nothing here. I actually ran this test because I thought I'd somehow managed to miss something and somehow agility did matter. And then I ran the test and I was like, okay, I'm not crazy. I didn't miss the fact that agility does nothing. So then we got test two. How good is targeting? Targeting is your chance of hitting something. You only have that little battle screen pop up if you hit something. So that's safe file two. For this one, I used slightly more air wings. Why? Very specific reason. I'm going to take half the air wings, I'm going to put them on naval strike, and the other half I'm going to put on naval patrol. So half of them are trying to find the ships and then relay to the other half to target them. And you'll find this works much better. You find the ships much faster. If I just unpause for a bit, we instantly strike 14%. That's actually really good. Oh, and, and I did add on air brakes this time. So we've got the 10 targeting rather than 6. We're about, was that 40% more likely to strike? No, it's more than 40. It's like 60% more likely to strike. So I was doing these tests in runs of 6, and if you let it go, they do strike quite frequently. When you have something on naval patrol, for the naval bombers using two naval air wings, I was finding I was doing near equal damage to using the heavy fighters. But the big thing I found, the naval bombers I was doing it in like two weeks, getting six results. The medium airframes, even though I was putting up one for naval strike, the other one for naval patrol, I was finding it was taking me closer to two months than two weeks. And I repeated it again and again. And I am definitely seeing that medium airframes are doing more damage than the naval bombers simply because the naval bombers aren't using all of their air wings all of the time. But the time it takes for them to do that damage is so much longer. Even using that naval patrol, I'm doing 12% damage per strike. You know, that's two months it's taking me to do six strikes versus two weeks to do six strikes. So even if I'm doing less damage each strike, I'm doing four times more strikes. So if we just multiply this by four, I'm really doing nearly three times more damage in the same time frame, which is quite a bit. So naval targeting is quite strong because even here, just switching to naval targeting and patrol increased my average damage from 5.6 to 8.8% 8 .8 per strike. The patrol also slightly increased the amount of damage my medium airframes did actually too, but not nearly as much. And then the large maritime bomber, that isn't actually a really poor result for them. For how expensive they are, they're 
36% more expensive and only did 13% more damage? I mean, their range is massive, and they are benefiting definitely from the raw stats. They suffer from low targeting, same as the medium airframe. So yeah, I've got my little note here that we're dealing more damage per strike, but it's taking way longer to do the damage. So the last test, what about AA? So I refitted the British ships. This is something the AI is never going to do. The AI does not put AA on its ships, but it's still useful to know. So if we tag to the English, I've refitted these all into a ship design I called the AA Boy. And by AA Boy, I mean it's got 45A. Like this is a multiplayer ship that you design because you know you're just gonna go up against a swarm of naval bombers and nothing else. So. Let's see how this goes. This time I did up the size of the test a little bit. You know, you're not going to be using, you know, two air wings and three air wings. You're going to be using a, quite a bit more. So there are two strikes there, both about average damage. One of them, we lost 42 naval bombers. The other one, we lost none. That was quite a large strike. We hit five different ships, which suggests that five different air wings flew, even though it's only showing us one, and we lost 45. And we're gonna see that we lose 45 on most strikes. But this one, we got lucky, we lost none. That right there was the best I've seen. Basically what I was seeing for these guys was either they were losing about 45 or they were losing 90. They were basically losing 45 per sortie. And sometimes they did tons of damage, sometimes they did not very much. And then I reloaded, I did it again with the medium, just to see like, does air defense do stuff? Because the medium bombers do have quite a bit more air defense. I believe I'm using this airframe, which it has 32 versus the other one only having 13. So that's quite a bit of a difference. And first strike, they still lost 45. Air defense seems to have no impact on the amount of losses you lose to AA, and neither does agility. And because of fixed air wing sizes, you can't do the old way. The old way to avoid taking losses was to just sink the ship you targeted, but that required air wing size of a thousand to do reliably. We are seeing something a little weird here. It does feel like rather than the air defense reducing the damage you take, it reduces the likelihood that you're going to take damage. So like there were two strikes here, but one of the strikes did not result in them losing airframes. As you could see for that one split second, there was the difference. Right there, we were seeing about every other one versus with the light airframes. I was seeing basically every strike was losing at least 45. If you're losing 90, it means you had two strikes and both lost them. What we see here actually when we're using larger numbers of air wings, 9 versus 4, which is about the IC cost difference, we're actually doing more damage on average because we have so many more planes. But then we're losing, well, only slightly more. If I change this back to zero, it's going to be quite a bit more IC. If we take the IC and we divide it by average damage dealt, that's a little bit of a difference, but it's only about 10%. But this one is so much better at dealing its damage now. It doesn't have to wait, you know, six months to do it. Those strikes happen like every day. So if you really want to sink a fleet, especially against the AI, light airframes, unless you really need the range. I mean, like, obviously you're going to have a significant advantage using something either like this or like this if you're trying to operate out in the Pacific. You know, these air zones are massive. You need range. 3100 range is quite nice. But honestly, this simple little design, 1380 range, is good enough. You're definitely going to want to escort it against enemy fighters, but it's good enough against ships, and you're dealing that damage much faster than these larger behemoths. One other thing I'd like to talk about is flying boats. So you can put this little module on, it only costs IC, and it increases your surface and sub detection. This alone does not allow you to do naval patrol. Don't ask me why, but it doesn't. However, it does aid you once you put a torpedo on, because once you put a torpedo on, then you can do naval patrol. If I take the torpedo off and I replace it with a large bomb bay, you can't do it anymore even though you're a flying boat. These naval patrols, they give you a little bit of intelligence. They let you spot the enemy fleet. It can be quite useful, especially in the Pacific. Over here in the Mediterranean, you could have just put up a whole bunch of fighters and and they would have helped you spot the fleet just fine. But when you're out in the middle of the Pacific, it definitely is a bit of an aid that you're going to need because you saw how long it was taking for these bombers to actually hit something. When I turn off Naval Patrol, I let it run and okay, we got one strike and then it's gonna be you know another week until they hit a ship in the same spot. They're not moving, they're not on patrol. That's the only time I've ever seen 90, but that's because they did two strikes. It takes quite a bit longer for each strike to happen when you're not on patrol versus when you are. Anyways, I think the smaller naval bombers are going to be better. At most, use the medium airframe. Don't use the large, the large costs two rubber, and it's not really that big of an upgrade. Plus, if you make a heavy fighter, if you don't need to be naval bombing, you can use it for air supremacy. You can't use this for air supremacy. You can't really use this for air supremacy. This 
you can put on air superiority and it'll just give you 1.25 air supremacy, even though it's not able to do any actual dogfighting, which can be quite useful if you're trying to naval bomb your way into a naval invasion. Anyways, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time.